What's going on, guys? It's Ryan from RPS Dent Specialist coming to you with the live Dent Digest show. What's going on out there? So we've got a special guest on tonight. Um, his name is Paul Corden, and uh, he's actually out of town chasing hail. So he's in his hotel room having some technical difficulty, but that's what happens when it's a live show. You know what I mean? It's it's stuff happens. So he should be on here shortly. Um, you know, I, I've got a couple things I want to talk about anyway. I know we have uh, Don Cavanaugh and, and Mike Toledo at the PDR Secrets event seminar up in Canada. Been watching all his live streams today, and it's it's been really. There's a lot of really good information on there. Um, it uh seemed really informative so far so there's some some really good guys up there uh you know uh, going through some information uh, it's it's nice to see in this industry the changes of the different seminars and the events that are out there uh just to inform us you know when i started there there it was a hidden secret you know it was completely hidden there wasn't a lot of uh trade secrets and stuff out there that that people were giving away now it's just kind of free content there's youtube instagram facebook so many avenues out there that people can really get great information so and you know even on that point there's some really good tools out now um i just did a full review on this gorilla grip handle that john highly made um I've been using it regularly since I got it. I used it a little bit before I gave gave the review. Uh, one of the biggest tools that I'm using it on is the uh, Dent Reaper. It works really, really well. Um, you know, you can take this rubber ball off and put it on this end. It's really versatile. It, it It's really, really well made. I saw the prototype one at the Anson booth at the... Um, hail expo and it was a little different handle configuration there was like a shorty and then a longer one this handle configuration is absolutely perfect and i've got little kid hands so you know it's uh one of those things but the build quality of this thing is awesome it's got good weight to it i just saw paul actually post sometime today i guess he ended up getting one himself so it's uh it's definitely getting around you know it's the torque on this tool is really really powerful you know it's uh it's a great well-made show um well-made tool it's super super strong getting ready i gotta send paul an email here he's having some technical difficulty so just bear with me for one minute um but anyway it, it it's well made it, it it's an unbelievable tool let me get this over to him so anyway the other tool that I've been using is those dead center glue tabs. And I've been using them more and more lately. It is, those things pull incredibly hard. Incredibly hard. Um, it, just the center, it almost pulls the dents inside out. So... I can't even explain. I don't know what they're made out of. I don't know if they're made out of whatever material. It looks like the standard ice material. Um, so if you don't have those, make sure you get them. It's a really, really good tab. Really, really hard. I mean, we've been pulling them craziness uh, for the last, I don't know, couple weeks we've been using them i've had them since mt i didn't use them that much but lately i've been using them more and more 
So those things just pull crazy. Let's see uh, Costello's on here, Push and Polish, Dwayne and Shane, Mike Flores. What's going on, man? Arizona, huh? I bet you it's warm out there in Arizona. I bet you it's warm. So, yeah, those, those tabs pull so hard. It's unbelievable how hard those tabs pull. Uh, you know, there, there's some good... I almost think it is the shaft. So the dead center tabs, the shafts are super small and super long. Um, Kiko makes them, Matt. They are awesome tabs. It's I just got a variety pack. I haven't broken any of them yet. We've been pulling them super duper hard, uh, and and haven't pulled them, haven't broke them. You know, haven't pulled paint. It just literally told, turns them inside out. Um, the uh, what else is there? The um, I've been using the plate also. There's a plate that they make the dead center plate, and it's an awesome, awesome plate. I just got it a couple days ago, and uh, it seems to pull the metal dead center a little more. It kind of has the two feet and pulls from the center. I'll bring it on next week and show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, Paul's sending a message again. I'm trying to get him set up, but he's having some issues. And it's here we go with the live show, you know. So we've got Matt on here. Matt's got an awesome product. Um, I'm probably I want to get Matt on the show also. Um, he's got the grip, get a grip arm. So the get a grip arm is um, an arm that I use all the time with the heat gun. So I used to use the Elimident arm. And you just kind of suction cup it on. It's got a little ram claw on the end. The thing I really like about the get a grip arm is it's truly super long. Um, I've got the XL. He's got a standard size. And the versatility of it, the way you can configure your heat gun, the way you can just move it out of the way, you can slide the shafts down on the rods. I mean, it is, it is an awesome tool. So if you don't have one of those, you've got to, you've got to, get one i mean they're cost effective and you will use it he makes a, a umbrella attachment i mean he's got some really good stuff out there so you know it's uh it's 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 a good tool you know it is the strong arm look at that i'm calling it the wrong thing it's terrible but it's an awesome tool you've gotta you gotta get yourself one um, still bear with me. Paul's trying to get in here, get it over. Um, but you know, the, the other tool that I've been using quite a bit, that's fairly new is the, uh, new Blem, um, What's it called? The Blem Easy Leverage. That tool, I, when I first saw it, when, when Mark was showing it to me, it was a tool to where I was like, oh my gosh, this thing looks a little crazy. Um, it looks like a tool that you have not ever used. It's got this crazy bend on it. I haven't used the long one. They make a long one and a, and a short one. And the short one, it really, very little pressure. Um, it, it, it's got a lot of torque to it. So it, it's, it's an interesting tool. It's got a weird bend in the shaft. If you go on uh, Marty from Top Gun's YouTube page, he, he explains the reason he made it, the reason that he uh, created that you know, uh, design, you know, it's been a couple year design. Um, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, there, there's so many new tools coming out that how long have we been using those A1 handles? I am not a fan of the A1 handles. 
and then this comes out. And originally, and I told John when when I first saw this, I called him when I was at the Hale Expo, and I didn't quite understand it. So you have everybody's in this ratcheting, ratcheting handle thing, um, and it's. I originally was trying to think, and I'm like, there's no ratcheting part here. I'm not quite, you know, you have to release the handle to get it to turn. But then a couple hours later of sitting there playing with the thing before it was released, before anybody really saw it, it clicked. Like I said in the in the in my review, and it's not for the ratcheting part, Ryan. It's for the leverage. And it's it's got that sleeve. I mean, there's some of these tools that are coming out, the quality of them, the the build of them. It, there's nothing like it, you know. I mean, I use that get a the, the strong arm from get a grip every day, every single day. Um, so the new the new uh, a limited inhale light that's an awesome light, it is freaking awesome. You know, the quality of it's unbelievable. It's a little heavy, I think they said it weighs about four pounds. Um, but you know, it's it's the quality of the tools. The Robo Lifter. I mean, this this is a great mini lifter too. You know, I've been using this and the Lift Right, Ray Sap News Lift Right. That's that's an awesome tool. It is an awesome tool. So, you know, some of these new things that are coming out, you're kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Um, I worked with Blem on a new hook tool. I know there's a rim fixer. He's got one of those. It's kind of a shorter 5 16 shaft uh, ratcheting handle. I use it all the time. Um, it's straight shaft. There's no bend on it like the Dentcraft has a right and left. This is kind of just a standard standard run through. Um, but, you know, it, the good thing in this industry is a lot of the dent guys like Matt, like Chad Peters are coming up with these tools and they're, you know, changing the game with these things. Absolutely changing the game. Um, the, you know, the, um, the difference in the makes of the tools, the materials, you know, the materials are so much better. Uh, it's uh it's super cool. Bear with me one minute. He's sending some more messages. But anyway, before I ramble on about some more tools. So Matt's asking, don't you think A1 should sell them? I, I do. Um, I, it's a little pricey. It, it, you know, the price is in the $200 range. So I don't know if they'll send it, sell it as just an accessory. I know Anson sells them, <clears throat> but it's it's it is pricey for some guys, you know. It's um, but I'll tell you, there this thing is so so beefy, so beefy, um, so well made. But it's it's an awesome awesome thing, uh. Paul's sending me some photo series. Not having very good luck today. Let's see what we can do here. See if I can get him on here. What's up, Rim Fixer? Yeah, they're definitely changing the game. What's up, Benny? Um, a lot of these tools are changing the game. It's it's the way that it it should be. You know, it's like I said before. It's such a a um. I'm trying to send him in again. Paul's giving me a whirl here. May have to go a little extended time if I get him on here finally. If not, we're just going to ramble about tools today. That's okay. Um, so anyway, last week I was at my buddy Jamie's place, and we kind of went over the, the benefits of, of the detail having paintless dent repair in a detail shop. Um, I do quite a few detail shops. Jamie was a little, little nervous. 
but he'll get it. He's not a YouTube star yet, but let me tell you, he's got a, a great business over there. Um, I'll be using his location periodically just because it's a cool place. It's um, a really nice location, super well lit. Um, you couldn't ask for a better location for him to have that location. That's why I do so well out of there. Um, but you know, it's, it's, he's a good dude. He's a good friend of mine. Um, the real benefits of the, of the detailing end of it is that they see the car and they usually have it and they know their customer. So if someone's paying a ton of money for a paint correction, they're going to have the dent fixed. You're about 95% of the time you're going to have that dent fixed. Uh, so it is a benefit, you know, you just need to build that relationship. And, and here we go again with Ryan, with the relationships, but you need to build the relationships with those detailers to get them to sell it. And you have to educate them. You know, the education part of it is, is massive. Give them a price guide. I, like Jamie's got a Paul Corden price guide, you know, from mobile tech RX. And it's got the roller on there. It's pretty self-explanatory. And there, there's a learning curve in, in any of those. Uh, there's a learning curve with any of your insurance adjusters or the, uh, you know, estimators in the body shop. You have to educate them because they don't know about the laminated glass. They don't know about, you know, double panel. They don't know about the glue pool or different stuff like that. But that's his growing pains in, in training these guys how to do it. Um, you know, the products that, that he has, you know, uh, that compound, those buffing pads, I bet you it saved me probably 50 or $60. Uh, the problem in our thing, we always put just a little dab of polish on that pad and it's drying up and it gets crusty and then it flings stuff all over the place. They never last, you know, and it, it gets hard and crusty using those pads with that pad cleaner. And it's not just because he's a friend of mine that I'm telling you the truth on these products. It has changed me. You know, it really has. It's uh, it's an awesome, awesome product. Just the cleaner and those pads work really well and they're cheap. I was paying $14, $15 for one of those 3M pads before. So, you know, I just want to bring some products that I'm using the quick detailer. It's cheap and it works really, really well. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's great, great products. You can't really go wrong with it. Um, I don't know if you guys have had any hail yet in your area. You know, we, we haven't. It's been a little later of a year. We usually have hail last year. We had hail in February, but I see the guys in Texas are getting crushed. You know, look at that. We got some Canadians in the house. We got the dent fixer. You're not going to the the big seminar over there in Canada? You know, it's it looked like it was a great time. I was watching some of Toledo's videos and Don Cavanaugh's stuff. It looked like it was a pretty good seminar. So, you know, it's it's nice to see you guys, even in just in my little YouTube live show that I have here, kind of communicating between each other you know, um, reach out to each other and on Facebook and Instagram and, Hey, you know, I'm having trouble with this or, Hey, I'm having trouble with that. It's the best way to do it. You know, I get messages a couple times a day from guys that reach out and have troubles with this or troubles with that. And it, it, Hey, I'm all about giving back. You know, that, that the main reason I was doing this show was to give back to an industry that was so good to me. You know, and, and I'm very, very fortunate to have um, companies that want to be involved. You know, um, it, it's super special to have guys like Matt that want to contribute, you know, uh, the Dent Reaper, you know, all these guys, Scott Grimes. There's a lot of guys that have reached out that um, that want to contribute towards this little live show thing that I'm doing. And it's super special for me. You know, it's, uh, it's super, super special that to have these guys, um, involved and, and, and 
you know, just kind of involved in the industry. You know, back in the day, there were a lot of guys that companies that weren't involved and we all spend the money, you know, it's all, it's, it's expensive, you know, but there, there's, you have to spend money to make money. And I'm a big thing with that. Uh, you know, if you don't have the tools, you can't do the repairs. So, you know, it's the industry super cool. You know, MTE this year was a blast. I mean, I, a bunch of you guys I got to meet and hang out with and have real conversations with and guys that are just passionate about, um, passionate about dent repair. You know, it's so, it's so crazy. It's so crazy that the industry has gone to that to guys that are just care and, and do as much as they can in the industry and, and try, you know, you know, Benny's like, you helped that you helped out. Uh, I'm just a little part here, man. Just a little, little guy on the tree. There's other guys out there that are putting way better content out there and way better interesting stuff. I mean, Paul's one of them. Paul puts out some great information, you know, some great content and he's been a big contributor to the industry. Um, you know, you've got Mike Toledo, huge contributor to the industry, John Hiley, all those guys, you know, Don does a live, live video feed every single day. I, I don't have the time to do that. I just don't, you know, um, we're extremely busy. We try to do what we can do, <clears throat> but I don't know. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's been super cool. It's been a lot of fun. You know, it's, uh, a lot of guys, I, it's, it was just kind of funny today. I had a phone call from a kind of a higher up guy for state farm. And he says, Hey, I, I'm in Texas and, uh, I've, uh, got a guy here with your t-shirt on. I don't, I don't quite understand what's going on. And, uh, it was it was it was funny and it was one of the guys that i know down in texas doing some hail so what's up q i'll tell you q dent repair man i, I really have to give him some love because on the last tool giveaway i swear he commented 115 times or 120 times it was it was pretty pretty interesting we had almost a thousand comments on there so it was a pretty good we're going to be doing another massive, another tool set giveaway um, in two weeks. So two weeks we're going to do another giveaway. You know, it's we've got a, a character of, a, of a, a tool manufacturer coming on. So it should be some good content. It looks like Paul's almost got himself on here. I don't know how much more I can ramble on about tools and the industry. and You know, but that's what happens on a live show. You know, you're you're gonna have hiccups and problems and reason things aren't working and you just roll with it. You know, it's just YouTube, you know. And like I said in the hell, it's it's real life stuff here. Um but yeah, we, we haven't had any hail. It's been uh it's been a little slow, you know. A little slow with the uh with the hail end on my end, which I don't mind. We've been so busy. It looks like uh, if it doesn't hail, I'm not mad. You know, all you guys in Texas, man, you guys are getting crushed with, um, what's it called? With hail. So we've got Paul over here. I can't quite get him logged in. I can show you guys. He's kind of just hanging out there, not figuring it out. But we will figure it out. If not, I'm just going to ramble some more. And you guys will just have to hear my voice the whole time. You know, it's, uh, bear with me. All right, let's send this again. There we go. All right, let's see if we can get them in. Anyway, 
what do you guys what do you guys want to hear? Is there certain techs in this industry that you want to hear for hear from? You know, is there some younger guys you're like, man, he's doing some really good content, some really good ins- information out there. You know, some some I don't know issues that he's having or put those in the comments or just message me directly. You know, is there a tool manufacturer you want to hear? Let me know. You know, send me a message. Uh, you know, it, it's it, it's about you guys. You know, I'm I, I've got a pretty successful business here, and you know, we we do okay. Uh, kind of just doing this because I enjoy it. I really enjoy just helping guys out that need the help and and doing, you know, this type of thing. It's been a lot of fun. But still trying to get them in. Look at that. But anyway, you know, it's it's looks like looks like the Dent Reapers in here. You know, he uh it's kind of funny. I was talking to him on the phone the other day and looks like somebody kicked his truck. I wonder if he ever found out who did it. Then he, he did a video on, I think it was on YouTube, doing the repair. Turned out really good, man. Turned out really good. You know, that's a that's a bad thing. Uh, push and polish? I think I am. I think I'm going to make it out to the Vegas MTE and Orlando. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot of information about it. They're not really... Um, doesn't look like they're pushing it really hard, so I don't know exactly what's going on. I need to really look into that and try to get some more information. I, I, I remember Anson, Daniel Grom, and I were talking about it, and he said the same thing, that they weren't really marketing it correctly and trying to, to get the information out there. So I, I don't know what's happening. We, I haven't booked anything, but I'll probably, probably pop up there. And I, I don't know what it's going to be like. It's the first year, and Dent Guys in Vegas is going to be trouble. So, you know. It's uh, it's going to be really trouble with Dent Guys in Vegas. But, yeah, I mean, the tour reviews definitely help. I'm a huge review guy. You know, I mean, I watch all the other guys' reviews. I kind of, uh, you know, um, do reviews on if I'm buying a new product, if I'm buying a new phone or a new bag, I watch all the reviews on YouTube. Look who it is, Mr. Paul Corden. What's happening, man? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Look at this, guys. Mr. Paul made it on here. That was like a journey. <laughs> this explains to these guys. I've been rambling about tools for the last 29 minutes. You know what? That's how I know you really love me because you got my back on that. My bad. I'll own it for everyone. My fault. No worries. You know what? It's a live <laughs> show, man. So anyway, where are you? I am in uh, Kansas right now, Kansas. as you can tell by the uh, the beautiful hotel room you see behind me here. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys if you guys know Paul Corden. I hope you do. I mean, the guy's famous. He's got his own price guide. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but yeah, I mean, I have a price <laughs> guide, but I don't know about the famous part. Oh, but thank geez. you for the kind words. It's nice of you. So anyway, so let's get into your story a little bit. We may run a little over tonight, which isn't a major ordeal. So how did you get into the paintless dent repair famous world? Uh, well, so the famous world or the business in general? Let's just start from day one. How did, day, how did Paul Corden get started? Day one. Okay, so I was a very young married man. Uh, I was 21 when I got married. And at the time, believe it or not, I was still playing in a band. And I was, you know, working, uh, selling loans, education loans at a company. And uh, I had a buddy of mine that was in my band and and he was doing paintless dent repair. And he's like, at one point, he's like, hey, you know, you, you're married, you have a family now. You know, maybe you should think about doing something a little bit more serious with your, your life, your career. And um, he said, why don't you check out what I do? And I said, okay, sounds good. I'll, I'll, what the heck, man? I'm 21. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I didn't go to mm-hmm. school. I'm like, sure, why not? So, um, I shadowed him for a day or two and I was like, this is cool, man. This is, you know, I'm working on cars. You're working on different cars. 
every other hour. You're at a different dealership every, you know, two, three dealerships a day, maybe a body shop here or there, a detail shop. And uh, the scenery was changing. The customers were changing. And uh, you were writing an invoice every time you finished fixing a dent on a car. And that whole, you know, pretty quick turnaround time as far as do a service and make money, that was appealing to me. You know, I, I grew up uh, with a contractor as a dad and I would go and do uh, these basement jobs or these kitchen renos or whatever. And it would take a month to get to the point where, you know, you saw some sort of finished project uh, or more than a month and uh, where you saw a finished product. And I was like, man, I love the immediate gratification of painless dent repair. You fix a dent, you look at your finished work and you're like, this is awesome. And then you go get an invoice signed and collect a check or a credit card. And, and yeah. you're like, that's awesome. I get paid right away for my work. <laughs> it was, it was a totally different world for me. And I, and I liked it. That was the direction I wanted to go. So, um, I interviewed for, uh, that company, uh, that local company and I got hired and I started my journey in 1999 training on, uh, CarMax cars. Yes. So 99, man, there were a lot of murdered CarMax cars yes. from yours truly. <laughs> I did it too. I worked in CarMax for, I was actually a CarMax employee before I started pushing dents. Oh, really? That's how I found out about it. But man, I did CarMax cars for at least 10 years. Was that in, drilled, up in Maryland or? Yeah. Yeah. I, I drilled more cars than anybody in the world, I think, <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, I, I definitely remember. Um, I definitely remember at the time that was before Carmax had um, they had accounts or deals with other other vendors, and uh, we'd show up to work and it'd be two of us pushing me, the trainee, and then the trainer, and there'd be twenty cars lined up outside, and I'd we'd look at that lineup and I'd go, "This is awesome! I'm just going to be sitting here pushing on, you know, Value Max cars all day or whatever yeah. they were." So it was it was a good run. It was a good time. It was. It's good training too. It's it's a perfect training platform. Yeah, absolutely was. Yeah, phenomenal. I mean, lots of cars to work on um, because of the nature of the way that they they sell and recondition cars. It, it was just a great combination of, uh, you know, not extremely high expectations, but also a ton of work for you to practice on. So mm -hmm. um, it was good. Not that I'm not saying the CarMax doesn't have, uh, you know, put high expectations on guys now, but at the time, you know, it was it was definitely a little more lax than it is today. So yeah, today it's definitely they definitely the quality definitely has to be there. You can't drill anymore. You know, the industry's changed. I mean, it's yeah. I'm seventeen years in or eighteen years in. So back then, the bigger damage I was passing on all day long. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was bad stuff. So so I saw before we get any farther in your thing, I saw you did a little quick video of this guy. Yes, what are your thoughts. So I was super impressed right out of the box. Um, I was super impressed with the build quality, the, uh, you know, basically the production quality of it and, you know, between the stainless and the, and the rubber grip and everything, the extensions. I mean, it looks awesome. I'll be very honest. I don't have a tool I can put it on yet um, because I, I typically, I think uh, from what John told me, uh, those are working with the Dent Reaper tools and the A1 tools, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't own any Dent Reaper. Um, on and here, actually, John's on here. So. Oh, is he? Oh, right on. Yeah, John killed it on that thing, man. The design and the and the the quality is amazing. Um, but the uh, I don't own any A1 and I don't own any Dent, Dent Reaper. And there's a reason why I don't buy the A1 ratchet handles because those handles to me are yes. really a pain in the butt. They are just not comfortable. There's nothing about them that's good for me. And this is not about A1, guys. Hear that. I mean, I love A1. A1 is a tool company. It's been phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but that particular handle is just not very, for me, very usable or comfortable. So I don't even use any of those ratchet handles. Um, but the style that John designed there is more along the lines of what I like. So I had posted today, I posted a video of that thing. And, I, and my question was, Hey, what tools do you guys recommend buying to use with this handle? Because I don't have any dent repair. I don't have any A1, uh, you know, adjustable handle. And to be honest with you, I've been so busy today that I haven't even had a chance to read the comments. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of looking forward to going through that tonight and figuring out what what do I need to order in order to work with that new handle. So I'm going to predict the future. It's going to say the tequila tools and the dent reaper. Got it. Tequila that's tools my, and dent reaper. All right. That's my prediction. I, I will have to get back with you on what the uh, well you could probably go to that that post and and read the comments as well <laughs> and we'll we'll see if you're right or not. 
So let's but keep yeah. going with your story. Let's let's rock and roll on that one. Right on, man. So uh, so I became a technician in 1999. Started training. About four months later, I got out on the road and uh, I followed the guy that got me into the business up to uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, which is just over the river from where I live in Northern Virginia. And um, so what happened was about a year later, he decided a year or two later, he decided to bail on the business and uh, went and did his own thing and left me with this, you know, region to run, which was awesome because it was already kind of pre-built. And uh, I just had to continue to maintain the accounts that I had and, and continue to build them up a little by little. So over the next, uh, what I would say, next seven to eight years, maybe nine years, um, I had built that area up, uh, had a pretty good route going for myself, had trained a couple of guys. We had, um, we had, uh, let me see, but when I left that region, uh, we had three guys running uh, pretty much full time there. And, um, and in 2000, I think it was 2008, the market took a crash. You, you, everybody knows that. And I lost a big uh, enterprise account. And um, that account was great. It was a phenomenal account back then. And uh, the guy that came in to compete with me was doing it for way cheaper than I was willing to go. <laughs> so I said, I said, that's no problem. It's your account. Uh, I can't help you anymore. And it hit me. Why am I driving an hour away to rebuild? So what I did was I kind of took my accounts and distributed them out to the different guys that were already there working. And I said, I'm going to go back over the river, back to my hometown and start developing that area. And um, from there, kind of slowly worked my way into uh, that retail shop in Tyson's Corner, uh, Northern Virginia, just outside of Washington, D.C., uh, that you guys, you, Ryan, know me for. Mm -hmm. um, and was there uh, probably, I think, about six or seven years until I decided to make the jump and go out as an independent technician. So that's everything in a nutshell, but I can fill in uh, any so of those uh, details for you. I've got a couple questions for you. When did your complex repairs come to where they were? You know, when, when did you sit back and say, I'm going to start taking on these things that are just smashed yeah. and start pricing them at this point? When did you decide to make that, you know, growth in your business? So I think um, I think the first part this is it's a two part answer I would say uh, really a three part if you think about it but the first part would be as a technician you know a route technician somebody who's dealing with body shops and dealers and you know any CarMax or or enterprise accounts which are typically a lot of wholesale and anything comes through the door at those accounts um, I think we all at some point are forced to do dents that are bigger and more sorry let me mute that bigger than um, than we really want to or feel comfortable to, but we do it as a concession to help out the manager or whatever else, right? So mm -hmm. I think everybody kind of starts the same way. We do all the door dings and then eventually you get this one on a body line or you get one in aluminum or you get a big one on a quarter or fender and you go, okay, I'll do it. And you do your best. And at the time you think it's great, but as you you continue in your career, you look back and you go, oh man, that my work was was dog crap back then, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't know it because you're, you're growing and, and everything to you is new and every, everything that you do is a new kind of a new, um, a new, um, success. So I think it started with wholesale stuff like that. And then eventually it grew into, you know, doing more retail and being asked to do things that were stretching me. And, um, I think the key to that was being able to under promise and over deliver in every situation. You know what I mean? Making sure that everybody knew that, yeah, you know, I can try to fix this dent for you, but even I don't know what it's going to come out like <laughs> because this is a challenge for me. This is yeah. beyond my comfort level and uh, being able to communicate that clearly and then set the expectation so that when whatever I delivered was at least at or above what the expectation was set at. And that that really helped me. What it did was it allowed me you know, to try these these dents out, to try new techniques, to even to potentially fail and sometimes fail, but still get paid to do it, yeah. right? Because I set the expectation right. So yeah. um, I would just be really straightforward with people and go, hey, listen, if anything, I would probably undersell myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I would just go, hey, this is what I think I can do. This is the percentage of improvement that I think you're going to see. Here are where the problem areas are going to be. Um, this is going to be the price and, and this started before I ever really had the price got in, involved. But, uh, and then I would find out that people were more than thrilled with what I did because I had set the expectation properly. I think they had an expectation in their mind that, you know, they'd be happy even if it was better. 
and not perfect. And so, you know, that ended up being a kind of a winning combination for me. And I just continued to tackle the next big dent, you know, the next whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving into uh, retail, when I started to do more retail and finally become retail uh, focused primarily, um, I started finding out that people in the retail world bring everything into your shop. I mean, you you know this. I mean, you'll get a door ding and then you'll get a giant bumper smash and then they'll walk in with a cocktail shaker that has a dent in it. And you're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, you know what I do? But so um, I remember specifically uh, there was a late 2000 uh, BMW 5 Series that a guy brought in and uh, it had a pretty good smash on the door. It wasn't horrible. Now looking back, it wasn't nearly as bad as some of the other stuff I've had to do. <laughs> but but back then I was looking at it going, oh my goodness, I don't know what this is going to be like. And and I and I did the same thing. I kind of undersold him and I was like, listen, man, I don't know what this is going to look like. I've never done anything. I, I was just honest with him. I've yeah. never fixed anything like this. Yes, we could potentially take the door off and try all these things. I don't know what it's going to look like. So just understand you may be coming back to a repair that's not quite repaired. And, and he was like, listen, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. He's like, I agree with your price. I agree with, um, you know, uh, the, the outcome, whatever it may be. Um, I just want you to try to fix it without painting my car. And I can remember specifically that one particular guy, um, you know, I, it, it clicked for me that the value of doing a, a large format dent without painting the car was so valuable and important to the customer. I remember that one particular one. I always kind of knew it deep down inside, but that door, that that one car is the one where I was like, holy smokes, man, it clicked for me. These <laughs> people value the idea of not painting their car greater than they value how much it costs compared to a conventional body shop, mm -hmm. right? And, and during that time, uh, I, I had already been incorporating uh, like the early version of the price guide, which was really limited. And then um, finally got to the point where I was frustrated with that because it really wasn't giving me all of the estimating opportunities um, uh, that that the current format of the guide does. So I was getting dents that came in that come in, that came in and they were just bigger than the existing guide that I had at the time could estimate for. So mm -hmm. I decided it's time to expand this thing. It's time to make it so that it can work with uh, every every size dent. And even now, uh, one of the one of the things I think a lot of guys get confused about is uh, they look at the, the current price guide and it it caps at like, I think 30 inches if you look in in a uh, mobile tech RX on the price of them feature. Yeah. And a lot of guys don't know what to do from there. But if, if you look at the way the increments are broken up, each inch equals an additional $50 on the dent, yeah. right? So you yeah. could potentially, you know, you could continue to do that math and price out any size dent or length of dent that you want. The other thing I do is a, a lot of people say, oh, well, I have a 60 inch dent, but your pr price guide only goes up to 30 inches. And I, it's real simple. You just take the 30 inch price and you multiply it Double. by two and that gives yeah. you a 60 inch dent, you yeah. know, cause the math all works out that way. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of where I got, how I got to doing bigger dents. Um, and then uh, as the price guide kind of came along, I continued to incorporate that into the estimating process on those, those large format dents, you know? I think, I think the biggest thing from like me personally, and I'm sure you too, is the edu educating your customer, explaining, oh, yeah why you're charging this or what the additional charges of laminated glass or, you know, double panel or, or all those options. Hey, I need to take the door off. This is why we have to take the door off. You're educating your customer to where you're, you're getting your worth. You know what I mean? You're, you're mm -hmm. explaining to them what the process is. A lot of these people still don't understand. They don't understand yeah. what the process is. You know, they still think it's hot water and suction cups. Or plungers. Yeah. No, you bring up a really good point. And um, it's one that I've actually had a conversation with people, a um, number of people with recently. And that is that by and large, I think PDR still has an awareness issue, right? Like the general public, if you were to go out onto your street corner and pull 30 people and you asked them if they've ever heard of PDR or if they've ever heard of paintless dent repair and could explain to you what it is, I honestly think that 90 plus percent of people still wouldn't be able to tell you what it was. And to me, that means that there is an awareness issue, which which means that any time that you're doing um, any sort of education with the public, I mean, it even though it might feel like it's in vain and you may not get a lot of response on it. I mean, what you're doing is you're really just training your clients, you're training your, mm -hmm. your customers. Yeah. And um, I, I 
hope, believe in that so much that I am unwilling to do estimates any other way, but to talk through the process, talk through their options, right. even, even tell them when I think a body shop might be cheaper um, than me. And what's funny is the more that I do that the, and the more honest I am with that information, the more trust I build yes. and the more customers are willing to pay um, uh, even higher than their deductible to have paintless mm -hmm. dent repair done. Um, and I'll give you a great example. We just I just finished a door on Saturday uh, before I left for Kansas and it was a Mercedes E-Class and the, the estimate came up to $3,000 on a single door, right? We pulled the door, I gutted it, we pulled the glass and the carrier plate and everything, worked on it um, and then got it all back together. It was glass. This gentleman had, um, uh, he actually had, uh, from what I can remember, filed a claim and if I'm not mistaken, you know what, I apologize, hold on, I'm mixing up two different cars. There was another car that was about 2,700 bucks. Let me correct this story. There was another Honda Ridgeline, it was $2,700 estimate. That customer filed a claim. He ended up paying $900 over his deductible to get that fixed without painting the car. Even though we told him the truth about the situation, exactly how it was going to go. We even told him, hey, your insurance company is going to tell you this. They're going to want to do this. Um, just be aware there's a difference here. And sure enough, what happened was he, he read the estimate very carefully from, from his insurance company, and he was not happy that they wanted to do uh, any repainting or replacing of parts, and they weren't willing to pay for an OEM part. They were going to replace it with an aftermarket part, and he oh, was wow. very unhappy about that. And so this guy was willing to, uh, this was actually two weeks ago, was willing to pay $900 over his deductible to have that fixed with PDR. And um, I think that should, I think that is the market telling us, PDR guys who are capable of doing big smash work, what we're worth. And if you ask me, I think we're worth I think they're telling us that we're worth more than a body shop repair, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I had, uh, it was a wholesaler that I've been doing for a long time and I don't do his work a whole lot. I kind of just pop in and, or he'll call me and be like, Hey, I have one for you. And he's, he uses another guy and he's honest with me mm -hmm. and he's like, he, he just can't do it. Yeah. He doesn't know how to approach the larger damage. And I'm like, yeah. It's some of this stuff is hard to teach. You know what I mean? Some of this mm -hmm. stuff is really hard to even some of these guys that have done it for a while. It's hard to explain because mentally. You're terrified. You're like, I, I don't know if I can fix this. The way I, I right. look at all this stuff is. You're coming to me because you want the dent fixed. If I can't fix it, you're going to the body shop and right. I know I can't make it worse than what the body shop's going to do. Yeah, right. Exactly. You know, it's all time. Yep. You know, our time is money, but it gets to a point sometimes to where that repair, you never know who the customer is. You know, we yeah. had Mike on from Heavenly Hail Repair. He has a massive Lincoln and uh, Ford dealership not far from his shop in Texas. And he was explaining how a guy brought a truck in and he did the repairs. And it was the owner of the dealership. Mm -hmm. And he almost did it as a test. And his relationship there, I mean, he's crushing it with them now. Yeah. You never know who these these, you know, customers are or you never know. So, yeah, you know, it's funny because on on big dent repair. Um, yeah, I think the biggest the biggest uh, the scariest thing about it is exactly like you said, it's that you're not sure how it's going to turn out. And quite frankly, I mean, there are still some dents that come in that I'm like, I sell it. I'm, <laughs> I feel confident when I sell it. And then it comes in for repair and I'm like, oh. I always oh, think I about it the night this. before. The night before, I'm yep. always psyching myself up. I'm like, yeah, look at my wife, and I'm like, man, I got a really bad one coming in tomorrow. I don't know if I can fix this. Yeah. <laughs> and then my helper comes around the corner and he's like, oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> as I, I mention it to my wife as well sometimes, and, and she'll uh she'll like text me and be like, You got this, honey. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Yeah, I hope so. I know it's easier to have confidence <laughs> in me when you're when you're not me, but um, yeah, I mean, it's so it's, it's hard to train big dent repair. I mean, it, quite frankly, I mean, it's, it's the reason why guys like you who have, you know, what, 18 years in the business and, and I'm almost two decades in the business now it's, we, we do it and we do it well and we make it look easy because it's taken us 20 years to get here. Right. Yeah. And I don't think, and I don't suppose that it's going to take younger guys 20 years to get there, especially having guys like us to guide them and, and new tools and all this other stuff. So, um, but I think for the most part, the way that it's worked in our business is that when we've had one of our guys tackling a big dent who maybe he's not ready for it, 
um, typically I'll kind of just, I've let him do his thing for a while and I'll kind of guide him here and there as he's going along. And then when he gets to the point where he just doesn't know what else to do and can't really figure it out, that's when I typically will come along and I'll start doing it from that point on to show him where the, the, the areas are that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And then he'll be watching so that he's gotten a feel for the, for the bulk of it. But now it's time to go, okay, I don't know what else to do from here. And now I've got to learn. So he'll watch over my shoulder and I'll explain what I'm doing. And uh, maybe I'll let him tackle a little more once I've given him some of that detail and uh, and so on and so forth. And it's 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 a process. I mean, unfortunately, big dent repair can't be taught in a day or a week. You know, yeah. it's just something that comes to you over the course of time and experience. And um, that's why, quite frankly, I think it's it's what makes this industry so great is that there's such a high barrier to entry and a high barrier to, you know, high level, uh, you know, uh, skill and repair. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not something that you can get from a two week vocational school or, no. or a one month training. It just it is the way that it is, you know. So you worked with uh, the company for a couple of years in Virginia mm -hmm. and then you decided to leave. Yep. So how, how did that transition go? So uh, I would say that I'm, I'm probably still transitioning a little bit. But uh, yeah. so what happened was uh, I was with a local company called Dent Masters owned by Brad Hodgson. And Brad was a just a wonderful human being. If you've ever met him, uh, you would know that. I, I owe him quite a bit uh, for right. my – yeah, Brad. I owe him quite a bit for my career and giving me the opportunity uh, to grow in his company. And uh, I was with that company for 19 years and then uh, was at the point in my career where I was ready for something else. And I think that something else was not something that could be provided by a company uh, being an employee. So I decided it was time for me to become an independent technician. And uh, part of my plan was to go push hail, chase hail, uh, in the process of transitioning into some sort of a local you know, business. Um, at the same time, uh, my brother Tim had uh, was a couple of years into opening his shop in the next county over. And uh, we had kind of talked about, well, you know, what what if we what if we joined forces and kind of became a partnership at some point? And uh, I we both had a lot of questions and wanted to make sure that we were doing it well because you know we, we as brothers we love each other and we have a great relationship. But we've heard from many people that sometimes business partnerships can strain relationships, and so we knew we didn't want that to happen to us. So we we went about it really cautiously and took our time uh, to try to decide whether or not that was something that was going to work. And uh, push came to shove and we, we uh, after talking about it for quite a while, we decided to join forces. I joined Dent Shop in uh, in uh, Virginia uh, with my brother Tim at late last year. So um, th we be made that a partnership. And um, at the time he had one employee just coming out of training. And since then we've uh, added another employee into the mix. He's coming out of training next month. And, and Tyler, uh, we, right? Tyler. Yeah. Yeah. Tyler, sure. Sure. We have Mark Sharp and Tyler Short are our crew right now, and uh, both great guys um, doing really, really doing great work. And and honestly, I would love to say, oh, well, that's because they've been trained by my my brother and myself. But I, that's part of it. But I think, um, man, the tools that they have available to them, the 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 camaraderie through social media, the camaraderie through and the information through shows like this and other podcasts and things like that. All of that stuff contributes to how f good and how fast these guys are becoming uh, so quickly. I mean, I man, I'll tell you, I got out of a four month training period, and looking back, I wasn't really ready to be on my own at all. Yeah. And I would, I would say, um, if I'm being really honest, I would say that I didn't feel like a full fledged master tech until I was in my eighth year, probably. Mm. That's when I felt like I remember it hitting me that, man, I feel like anything that comes through the door is going to be something that I can tackle to some degree. And even if I don't think I can fix it, I certainly know how to communicate to a customer what the expectations should be so that it still ends up being a win for both of us. You know, of me, the technician getting paid and the customer getting the work done. So it wasn't until really probably eight years into my career that I felt like I was a pretty well-rounded tech that could handle most things that came my way. And, uh, and I would say that even back in year eight, I still wasn't tackling half of the stuff yeah. that I'm, that I'm now seeing come through the door and, and looking at it and going, yeah, I can fix that. I think I can fix that, you know? Yeah. So, so we, we are going to extend the show a little bit because Paul's got some information I want to get out here. So if you guys want to hang around, we can hang around. Or if you're tired of hearing me ramble, I'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> but so you're working with your brother and there was some news that came out. I actually, I ran into Todd at, at Anson 
And I don't know if you guys, you know, saw that either, that he's carrying over the dent shop name to California. Correct. Um, and you guys are working on some different platforms and stuff for him. And he needed a location to build some of his awesome tools. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, that seemed like a pretty cool partnership for you guys because you already had a really good relationship with him already. Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, I think because of our personal relationship and um, the fact that, you know, we had we had become friends first and then uh, had begun to work together um, with another company we have called Hale Auditors, which deals with um, Hale estimating and negotiating. Um, and um, because of our working, our personal and, and then turned into a working relationship, I think Todd got a good feel for how I and Tim operate in our business. And uh, Todd was inter interested in opening a shop and, you know, retail, is, retail shops are kind of my thing. You know what I mean? That's just what I've done for so long. And it's become my personal uh, passion and, and, um, and somewhat of an expertise. I, I, don't, I don't ever claim to be an expert on anything because there's just so much more to learn. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and I, and I would never say that I know everything, but that is kind of where my wheelhouse is and I enjoy it. And so Todd said, Hey, I'm going to open a, up a retail shop in California. And, uh, he said, listen, you guys have done a really good job with your business. And what if I took that format and I just kind of put it, put it in California and that's what he did. And, um, so we've just kind of been walking along him, uh, the way all the way and, and trying to help him just figure out uh, what those steps are, uh, being a hail guy for so long and, and now a tool manufacturer, you know, Todd had not, uh, had to run a retail shop in quite a while. So, uh, that's been a great relationship and we're just continuing to walk by his side and watch him grow as well. So yeah. I'll tell you yeah. that. That carbon tech rod, I bounce awesome. between that and the Endeavor Dentals rod. Yeah. And uh, man, some of the stuff I was using before, it just sits in my garage now because I'm like, I why even carry it? I think if you've been doing dents for as long as you have, I mean, you're going to have a few hail rods that are sitting there doing nothing. Just a couple. <laughs> just, just a couple. At least two. You're going to have at least you know. two. <laughs> but uh, but you no, know, that his stuff is great, man. I mean, if you've never met Todd, I mean, Todd is just a quality guy in general. Like, if you meet him, you're only going to get a glimpse. And when you get to hang out with him, like I've gotten to do, you realize that there is, I mean, down to his core, that guy is just a good guy. He's you know, interested in doing what's good and right. I and didn't realize he's from that. Maryland. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's from Crofton, so he's not yeah. far from me. So I, we, I was at Craig's house at Anson and me, him and Vicky were talking for a long time and yeah. she was, she went horseback riding and I was like, you're in, <laughs> you're in Texas going horseback riding. So, <laughs> you know, no, they're but, good people, good so, people, and great products too. You know that though. So you, we're on the hail trail and I, I figured you were going to have a hard time because we, we've, me and you have had some conversations and, and, Paul's a big family guy. Yeah. You know, what do you have, sure. like 12 kids or something, right? 13 now. Jesus. No, we have five. So huge family guy, and I'm like, he's going to struggle. It's going to be hard for him to be on the road. Yeah, it was. It truly so, was. So where are you now? So what's your transition? I know you're working with Tyler and your brother and all those guys at the shop trying to get that up and running. And right. it always is a transition and, and takes time to, to grow that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, it is growing. It's been, uh, it's been growing, I think pretty well, uh, but it's, you know, it's not at the point where it can support four full-time guys, especially two of which who've been in the business for, you know, decades now. So, um, so we're growing it and uh, it's been doing great. We, we primarily focus on retail. We've got some wholesale too. Uh, and some, some things have been happening. We've been adding some new accounts and it's been great. Um, in addition to that, I'm still chasing hail. That's why I'm in Kansas now. And um, it's hard, man. I'll tell you what, it, it's just, it, the first year was especially hard. Uh, my first year of chasing hail, I ended up in Idaho Falls on my very, very first storm. And from what I understand, and I'm not a, an expert hail chaser, but Idaho Falls is about as far west as you can get to chase <laughs> hail. So I, I guess it doesn't hail there very often. And so I ended up there for a couple of months right off the bat. And of course, you know, that, that sends the family into a tailspin because they're like, dad's here every day and now dad's gone for two months. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, that was a rough transition. We made it through last year. Uh, after, after Idaho, I ended up in Wyoming for a couple of months as well, which is also probably only second to Idaho Falls, the furthest away that you can get mm -hmm. uh, to some degree. But, um, and I know it's not quite the furthest, but it, it felt like that. And, uh, and then came home and spent the, the winter at home working at the shop and uh, then left again 
uh, in April this year to chase, went up to Pennsylvania for a few weeks and, and now I'm in Kansas, but um, it's equally as hard. Um, but I think what happens is um, the family starts to kind of get used to it and I kind of get used to it, but we don't, neither of us like it any more than we did last year. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. still being away from home. I mean, there's nothing like sleeping in your bed. Um, there's nothing like eating home, homemade food, home cooked food. Um, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's just where my heart is. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so, uh, we're definitely pouring as much as we can back into the business to try to grow that so that someday, you know, it, it hail could be something we, we do when we want to do it and not when we have to. Yeah. And then, um, obviously wanting to be prepared for, you know, if we did get a big storm back at home, our business is prepared for that to be able to capitalize on it, which could keep one of us or both of us home for, a while, which would be cool. We just need a good storm in Maryland. You can just come up here and just. Dude, I am down. You know, if I can, if I can be at your place in an hour, I'm there. You know. <laughs> I'm there, bro. I got your so, back. So what's your plan? What's your, your next step? What I know you've got some things in the works and, and what's new. So um, what's new for me? So we, we have, uh, so we have the hail auditors thing going on. We, uh, we were, we were in the process of trying to launch PDR profit. Uh, that's proven to be a massive undertaking and uh, it's still in the works, but we obviously with the hail season in, in swing, we're on hold there. Um, but in addition to that, what I've been learning about hail and uh, especially as it relates to uh, you know, the price guide stuff, which is kind of my wheelhouse um, I have been, uh, and now I've been doing this for years, but I really haven't talked much about it. And now it's to the point where I feel like I've proven the model. Um, and I'm just trying to get the word out to guys who are chasing hail or riding hail estimates, even if you're local, uh, knowing that you can get a lot more money on uh, dents that are outside of the oversized range by using the price guide. And, and it will be uh, in almost every case, I think every case I've written from the price guide on an extreme hail dent, it has been approved by the insurance company. And I think what it comes down to is uh, the reason it works and the reason they approve it is it's a docu documentable and justifiable way of estimating large format hail dents. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, and what I'm, what I'm referring to is um, it's interesting because I've been having some conversations over the last few weeks about this subject and um, we're uh, coming down to a place where I'm really trying to put some definitions to this uh, for, for a number of different parties. And uh, what we're discovering is that there's really no such thing as a hen egg hail dent. And, uh, and then it's, it really is kind of a, it's a misnomer. It, it really just makes no sense to be honest with you. Um, and then what, what a lot of guys will refer to, and I know a lot of insurance companies will pay for, uh, in a double oversized dent is actually a bit, um, it, it's, I, I believe it's not quite right either. I think, um, the direction that we're going and that I'm going with this is that once you've gotten a dent to an oversized range, anything bigger than a half dollar, which is about 1.206 inches or whatever. Uh, and then you get up to about that two inch, uh, two inch range. I mean, you're really talking about that's what would be considered an oversized dent. And over that, you're we're talking about extreme hail. I mean, because most of those dents are going to take us more time, energy, and effort, which we should be compensated for. So what I've been doing is taking those uh, extreme dents and I've been applying the, the price guide process to that, which many of you uh, know. And if you don't, it's really as simple as uh, marking out the dent, taking a measurement of it, and then using Mobile Tech RX price dent feature to drum up the number for that single dent. So it does appear on a hail estimate as a line item for that one single dent. And um, just to give you an example, let's say uh, you've got you know 31 to 50 quarters on a on a on a hood, and then you've got this one three or four inch dent. Well you're going to get paid to do those 31 to 50 quarters. And then you're also going to get paid that additional charge for that one, four or five inch dent. And um, in some cases uh, it has turned out that the one uh, big dent will pay me as much as the rest of the hail will on that single panel. So virtually doubling the cost of your repair. Um, and, uh, and because again, because we're able to document it and, and justify it with our process, most insurance adjusters are going to look at something like that and they're going to go, I understand. I get it. This is an extreme situation. If you say you can fix it to uh, you know acceptable uh, quality, then we'll pay you to do it. You know, because their alternative is to replace the panel or, or repaint it. And now, what is your thought on the dent box? The power PDR box. Yeah. 
Um, it's a really cool tool and it can save you on some deep stretch dents mm -hmm. for sure. Um, I personally, I, I guess I get a little bit, I'm, I'm kind of a high energy guy in the way that I like to move fast and I like to work fast. And so, um, I hate anything that I have that slows me down. And I would say just for my personality, uh, hot boxes and power PDR boxes are like, like that one extra thing that you have to mm -hmm. do. You know, you got to go That's get it, way. plug it in and grind the paint off the backside and all this other stuff. But when you're in that situation where it's either that or they're going to kick the panel to conventional, it's probably worth the extra few minutes to set up the, the box and run the system. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm, I'm a big believer in it. If I hadn't experienced them myself, I own one of each of them. And um, I will say that I am probably, as far as being impressed with those products, uh, Power PDR Box is probably the most impressive to me. And then the aluminum hot box is extremely valuable and uh, very effective. Uh, then the seal hot box is, is, it's not as if it doesn't work. It works fine. It's just uh, limited in what it can do. But um, every single one of those, I mean, that's, that's, that's the latest technology in the business. So um, I think guys are probably silly not to at least, uh, you know, get a demo, take a look, try them out at, at MTE or whatever, see what they're about so that they can determine whether or not that's a, a tool that they want to put into their, um, you know, their arsenal. So, but valuable, uh, valuable units for sure. Yeah. So. So they're taking that line item, the insurance adjusters are just going at it from that broken down line item for the for that individual dent is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So basically what, the way that it breaks down if you use a mobile tech RX is um, I'll write the hail under the hail, you know, a uh, portion, the hail services tab. And then um, when it comes to that one oversized dent, three, four, five, six inches, whatever it is, I'll make sure that I mark out the damage. I'll use my magnetic ruler in there and take a picture of it so everybody can see you know, it's very clear what I'm talking about. And then uh, I'll go into the price ident tab on Mobile Tech RX and I will go ahead and charge for, it, it's the equivalent of charging for a retail dent at that size. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So totally. for instance, you have a six inch dent, you're going to go to a price ident, you're going to click on six inches, you're going to apply any factors that affect that dent. So if it's a six inch dent, but it's under the brace of a hood and it's in aluminum, you're going to add all those factors in. The number is going to be what the number is. And then we're going to present that to the insurance company or the adjuster, and they're going to do their review. Um, so far, uh, and I started doing this process, I would say four or five years ago on hail, uh, when it would come into the shop at the time, now I'm chasing and I'm applying the same process and it's working. Um, so far, I can't think of any insurance company that has told us no. Okay. Um, and, and I would say that we've worked with a number of the major ones and a few of the smaller ones as well. Now, are you writing that, uh, hail estimate under retail or under whatever the, like you can break it down, State Farm, USA. Yeah. How so, you, you know, it's interesting. So it really, it really kind of depends on the scenario. That's what it comes down to. That's what I'm learning is, and, and obviously this is predicated on the idea that um, you, you want to capture as much of the work as you can. We're here to make money, right? So um, if I'm in a situation where, uh, for instance, I was, I was working for a DRP shop they had a DRP with a couple of different insurance companies. And um, with depending on the owner, and some owners are like, you know, they, they feel like, well, screw the DRPs. I, I don't really care. I, I'm going to try to write this for a size I can and justify it. Great. Well, then that gives you a lot of room to work with. Some owners are like, nope, I'm, I want to keep my DRP status. I want to keep them happy. We're going to use their matrix. We're just going to write it as good as we can using their matrix. Totally get it. Uh, fine. We can do that. Um, but those types of, um, it, that type of information is really important to know exactly how you're going to attack and how aggressive you're going to be when it comes to hail estimating. Um, we were, I was in a shop that had a couple of DRPs and um, their main one was Erie. Erie's matrix was great. It was really good for what it was. And so we wrote everything on the Erie matrix and we just made sure to maximize every you know limitation and boundary that we could with the matrix. Uh, and then um, they had a DRP for a couple other insurance companies where we were required to use those matrices, matrices, and that's fine. Uh, and again, we just had to figure out where are those limitations and and, um, and boundaries and maximize all the space inside of those. And that's what we did. And then there were times when they didn't have a DRP agreement with a particular company, and we would write off the standard matrix. And that's that's just how that went. You know? Were you battling with the insurance companies a lot, or? 
no, no. In this, we, we had to answer a few questions, but it wasn't much of a battle. Um, I think in that case, because I was working for a, a, a body shop, um, their damage rider was the one who was really doing the interaction. And I, it's interesting because because of their relationship with the adjusters, I think there was a lot of they had built a relationship, they had a foundation, and the adjusters were going, "Okay, I get where you're at." Let me see what I can do to just make the numbers work for you and in your favor. And in a couple of situations, we were able to get, um, you know, on a panel by panel basis, we were able to, get, able to get higher numbers than we had even originally asked for because of the way that they had to work the, the prices and the numbers, okay. which is cool. But um, but it, interestingly enough, I'm in a situation now where I'm in a hail a retail shop, a PDR shop, and there are no DRP agreements. And so, you know, my opinion is um, as the, you know, in my shop as a shop owner, I get to establish the price and the matrix and all of those things. And as far as I'm concerned, when I have the customer's car, that customer has made the choice to use me. And so therefore, um, and I'll communicate all that to the customer. I don't have a problem doing that. Um, I'm going to use the standard matrix in every single situation and we're going to maximize that as much as we can. And, um, and I do it unapologetically. I don't, I really do believe that our work is absolutely 100% worth it. So um, uh, I don't, I'm not even worried if they're not happy about it. Uh, yeah. But I do try to, you know, I, that's not to say that I go in with it like a, a combative attitude with adjusters every single time. I try to make as many of them my friends as I can. But exactly. It's at so the much end of the day, we're going to, we're just going to kind of stand behind our, you know, what, what we do in our shop, you yeah. know? So. Okay. But, yeah. You got to, I think you, you really, I think the, the thing to take away from that is you have to be smart and you have to consider the setting and the situation, right? Not every situation is the same. Not every, you're never, you're not going to have only work in all retail PDR shops all the time. I wish that were the case, man. Cause that, that's my, that's my thing. I would love to do that. Yeah. And if you own a retail PDR shop anywhere in the nation, you can call me to come to your hill. I'd be happy to help <laughs> you. But yeah, shameless plug. But uh, no, but, but that's, I mean, the reality is, is you just got to be smart. I mean, if you're going to be working in a DRP body shop and they're a high production shop, you're going to make more money riding off of their matrix and rolling cars through there than fighting over every single car. Um, and that's coming from a guy who really believes in and stands behind full fledged retail standard matrix. You know what I mean? Yeah, of course. So. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it, some, you have to pick and choose your battles. I think sometimes with some of the adjusters that, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. The ones that are, aggressive and argue with you about every dime. And then, you know, ones that are like, just fix the car and make it go away. Yeah, no doubt. So no doubt. But so, I'll tell you this, when I am in my, my element at the retail shop, I'm, I'm willing to take some time, excuse me, to, uh, persuade people in the direction that I, I believe is right. Yes. So, yes. so after your price event, where are you with your, what do you, what do you, what's your plan with this whole, adjustment with pricing the dents and where we were talking for, uh, for hail. Yeah. Uh, so, so basically what I, what I'm doing is, uh, I'm kind of on a, a little bit of a campaign and it's not the reason that you had me on here, but, um, but you were gracious enough to say, Hey, why don't you just kind of talk about what's new in your world? And, uh, so what I I'm in the process of is, um, trying to, trying to just get the word out to technicians who are writing hail estimates on how to price extreme hail damage. And to start actually doing it, because um, as you know, and I think I know, this industry is not yet really owned by any one entity, which is great uh, because we have a lot of freedom. And that's why our grassroots movements are so valuable. Like, for instance, you know, the industry can decide that we're all just going to say, hey, from now on, we're, we're not going to be just writing uh, extreme hail damage as multiple oversized dents. We're going to write them in a professional uh, format with a process that's consistent and that is um, documentable and justifiable every single time because that's just the right and professional thing to do, in my opinion. And uh, and in the same at the same time, uh, at this point, um, we're in a conversation with PDR Nation and NAPDART about how we can uh, have some sort of a position statement um, posted on behalf of the industry on how we would like to, you know, uh, propose going about estimating extreme hail. Um, quite frankly, I mean, it's, for me, it's as simple as I, I'm asking because we don't have it and I want it, you know, so that's an ask. Um, 
and uh, just seeing how how there are other ways that we can continue to get the word out and also professionally start to establish a new process for this. Um, quite frankly, I mean, you know this, Ryan, and and I know it from being in body shops for so long, is uh, whenever a, a, a body shop has a question or an adjuster has a question on what it's going to cost to fix a dent in a car, sometimes what they'll do is go to the back, grab the, the foreman or the main body guy, and he'll come out and he'll stick his hand right on the panel. And he'll go, oh, that's probably going to be about... I don't know, five hours, right? Very, very, very inconsistent, not very process oriented, uh, arbitrary way to estimate damage. Yeah. Um, what's interesting is I think our process is even better than that. And it's more consistent and it's more professional. And that's why I think it's been so uh, well received by the insurance companies and the adjusters. Um, it, it's it's just something that we can go and apply to any dent, anywhere, any size. It just works. You know what I mean? So that's uh, that's where I'm at. And uh, it, quite frankly, I mean, uh, it's not so much about the dollar figure on the price guide as it is about the process. So I want to make sure everybody knows that. Um, now, I start my price guide at a certain dollar figure. Most guys know what that is. But um, the reality is, is I don't care if you want to start your, your pricing uh, lower than that, or even higher than that, as long as the consistency of the process in the process is there. And that's what I think is really going to make the difference. You know, that's, that's what people are looking for. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to think about it this way. Big insurance companies are trying to control their costs, right? That's just how it is. You got to control what you're spending and uh, know what sh what's coming in. And by being able to give them a consistent way of estimating dents, um, they're looking at going, oh, we can, that's something that we can depend on and we can make projections for the next five to 10 years off of something like that. I'm not saying that's what the insurance companies are doing. Um, quite frankly, we don't necessarily want to be cornered into something like that because we don't want to guarantee our prices are going to be the same all the time as, uh, you know, things will grow and change um, for a number of different reasons, inflation, you know, uh, cost of doing business, whatever. So, um, but, but I think it's a good direction. I think that's why it's worked so well you know, with insurance companies. So my, my goal is just, Hey, let everybody know what's going on. What's, what's new and how it's working and encourage you guys to try it. I know there are a number of guys who've been trying it recently and uh, getting back to me with a lot of success stories. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool to see it happening in other parts of the world as well. Now I've got a little homework for you. Yeah. So the way you're measuring that dent with your ruler, is there any way you can do a quick little video on Facebook or Instagram on how you're doing that process. Yeah. So yeah, some we can do that. understand, you know, um, how exactly you're measuring it and how you're, you're doing that process. I think if you just did a quick little blast through, cause there were some questions in there about it, you know, that you could, I think they would understand it and appreciate it. So yeah, sure. No, I could definitely do that. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, at the end of the day, it's really a three-step process, but, uh, I think showing it is is as important, if not more important, than just telling you about it. So yeah, I can do that. I will definitely do that. Definitely. For are sure. You, one of the questions on there, are you going to MTE Vegas? Uh, I, I'm undecided at this point, uh, not because I don't want to go, but it just depends on schedule and yeah. you know the business at home and all this other stuff. So, uh, but it, but it certainly sounds very interesting to me. The only thing that's scary is... Dank guys in Vegas. Dank guys in Vegas. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, man. Yeah, it's, uh, dank guys are they're they're hardcore, man. They they uh they like to party. Just a little bit. Just a little. Yeah. Bit. So now if now if a, a hotel in Vegas runs out of beer, I, I won't even I won't even be able to make a comment on that. Yes. Yes. I am but, glad that they moved it for Orlando. I'm glad they moved the location. Yeah. yeah. So you know that was a it was a it was a tough tough year for them this year trying to figure it out and yeah no doubt a lot of complaints yeah well you got anything else you want to go over if you guys have any questions for paul shoot them out here before we get off here we are running a little over yeah my fault i'm sorry hey you see this face i ran <laughs> my tools for 35 minutes we're good we're good i can ramble all day long so but no man i really appreciate you coming on yeah you know, um I don't know if, if you ever pop back in at another date. I do a ton of tool giveaways. So if you're looking for some dent reapers, maybe they're coming up here or Ooh, bunch of stuff. Check that out. what is your what is your newer favorite tool right now? A newer favorite tool. 
Um, I am getting, uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited right now about the dead center tabs from Kiko. Man, they're cute. Um, dude, I am, I'm so impressed. I, I really, like I, every time somebody comes out with a new tab, um, especially I think, I think, you know, gangrene, the whole uh, Black Plague stuff was like a, a mark in the history of, of glue pulling and PDR. And that stuff just blew me away. And I was like, there's no way that anybody's ever going to make a tab that's going to be any better. And I mean, honestly, I'm, I don't even know if I could say better, but they are just impressive. They're equally as impressive. Mm -hmm. And what's what's what I think where I can say they are better is how they've gotten them to such a small size, but yet still able to pull. They, I don't I don't understand it. It's beyond my ability to understand it. But and we were talking about them earlier um, this evening and. I think it's the the longer shaft, thinner diameter shaft. Yeah, and they just pull. They almost turn them inside out. Yeah, it's crazy. You no, know, I don't know if you've seen this. Did you see this yet? I have I, seen. Nope. I have seen it before, but that is very nice. I do. There were a couple complaints about it that the feet were really hard to move, and it is kind of harder. I don't know if it's the plastic. Right. Um, Chris said it was. Chris White from Kiko said it was super difficult to make. Mm -hmm. That type of material doesn't like to inject yeah. with that many contours. So yeah. those dead cool. tabs are beast, man. Yeah, I mean they're they're really they're they're performing really well right now. And uh, you know, I, I don't even dare say that we finally come to the pinnacle of glue tabs because <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to be impressed again. But uh, right right now, for the moment, that has been the most impressive tool for me on my cart. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think. I, I just got a chance to check out Car uh, Carbon Tech's new uh, Knockdown, um, and it's it's really really cool. It's interesting. I like it. Um, other than that, gosh, I can't think of uh, uh, John's uh, handle. John's handle. I'm dying to put that on a tool and uh, and see what it does. So the tool that you have to check out is Chad from Endeavor Tools Crown Killer. I saw pictures of it. Crown Jewel. It's not the Crown Killer. Look at that. He's going to send me a nasty gram after we get Listen, it. you know what? As long as it's not a, a Craftsman Hammer, I, I'm in. You're not a Craftsman Hammer fan? I'm not a Craftsman Hammer guy. <laughs> Never have been. <laughs> and I'm probably going to get a bunch of nasty grams on uh, Facebook from everybody. I'll but no. You, I've, I've got like six of them in my garage. And, and my new guy, Shane, was like, what's up with the Craftsman Hammer? So I'm like, I use those things for years, man. <laughs> Well, you know what that means you that means you and I can't be friends. I thought we could, yeah. but but yeah, yeah. I hate. I don't even use them. They literally sit there. I'm like, man, these are the worst. And your buddy made uh, tips. Was that like a joke? I, it, I think it was kind of a joke. Uh, but <laughs> I told, I did tell him today. I told him that I'm willing to give the tips a try, but I I draw the line at actually using an actual craftsman hammer. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'll try the craftsman tips on on another blending hammer, but I'm not gonna. I'm not going for the craftsman hammer. So. So we've got a Dwayne from Push and Polish says, can we make an, an estimator for how long it's taken for Paul to log in tonight? That was <laughs> it's already started. Yeah, you got me. I deserve it. It's all right. But I no, man, I appreciate you coming on, you know, um, getting your little story out there. And that was the main reason I was doing this show. So, and I wanted yeah, you man. to be able to get your idea out with the, with the pricing of the dents. And we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah you know it was it's a great idea so i really appreciate it no i mean my pleasure I, I i appreciate it too and uh i'll tell you this man after after being in this business for 20 years um i feel like i love it more and more every day i am i'm a i'm a career dent nerd i'll just own it and uh it's been a phenomenal career for me it's been exciting i feel like every day i go to work i don't feel like i'm i don't feel like it's a job you know what i mean i almost feel like it's a it's a fun game I get to play. Well, so, uh, for, <laughs> I, I, you probably know that better than I do, homie. But uh, but for any of those guys that are out there, they're you know they're tra in training or they're considering getting into it. I mean, you know, it's I would say get, go for it, get into it, but but be prepared to become passionate about it because it is a very rewarding career for those who I think put their heart and soul into it. You know what I mean? And I think it it just takes time. I think that's the worst part about this job. You know, you can you can go to a restaurant and learn how to be a cook and you can, there's a lot of things out there you can learn to do, but my new guy, Shane, I mean, it's been a, it's, it's been a couple months since he's been training and he's been with me for a year and it's a struggle. 
you know, he's like, this is so much harder than you make it look so easy. Yeah. And it's just, it's tough. So it I is. Appreciate, but... I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate your story. You know, a lot of these guys, you were heavy in the social media and then you kind of slowed down a little bit cause you were on the road and yeah, you know, I'm sure you're going to be popping back up. How can, how can all these guys follow you? Uh, you can follow me all over the place. If you want to um, Facebook, just friend request me. Instagram is at Paul Corden dent repair, or um, you can follow the uh, dent shop at dent shop. Ashburn is uh, our local shop scene. And um, yeah, man, reach out to me. Um, those are the two primary um, mediums that I use, but um, yeah, follow me, reach out to me. If you have any questions, I have a lot of guys that call or email or text or whatever, when they've, they've got questions, I try to help, help them out as best as I can. Um, but there are just some days I can't get to all the phone calls or texts. So don't be a uh, butthurt. Get, get get to you Ryan. You know. Yeah. Poor, poor Ryan today. I think he, I didn't even realize it, man. I thought I was on time and I realized, Oh, there's an hour difference between you and I right now. So I'm walking in the hotel. I'm like, well, we're three minutes out. And he's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's right there's a time change no worries no I'm worries just, but uh i appreciate you guys watching uh we'll be back on next week at 8 8 p.m eastern standard time and remember guys keep it real see ya see